Estamos de regreso en W Radio y porque sé que ustedes siempre quieren saber más de todo y porque sé que muchos de ustedes me la pasé el fin de semana leyéndolos en Twitter y en Instagram. Están verdaderamente conmovidos con lo que está pasando en Ucrania y Rusia y muy preocupados. Es que decidí darle la primera hora del programa a hablar de este tema con tres invitados extraordinarios. Está conmigo Leonardo Kurchenko, a quien ustedes conocen muy bien. Acabamos de hablar con Marina Agalstova, que es una abogada rusa del Centro de Derechos Humanos Memorial en Moscú. Y encontramos, por cielo, mar y tierra, a la subdirectora de la mayoría parlamentaria en Ucrania. Ella es Halina Yanchenko. Está ahorita en Kiev, en Ucrania. Halina, thank you so much for being on the show. Um, I would like for you to share with the audience who you are, uh, where you are right now, and what you have lived in the last six days. Okay, so hi everyone. My name is Halina Yanchenko. I'm member of parliament and deputy head of my parliamentary majority. I'm 33 years old and I'm mother of two children. Uh, my daughter is 10 and my son is five. And I didn't see my children for five days already because I had to send them away from Kiev, the capital city. I had to send my children and I didn't see them. I didn't have a, a, an opportunity to hug them, to say good night to them because it's very dangerous to stay in Kiev right now. Uh, over the past uh, five days, there was ongoing shelling, bombing and attacks on uh, the majority of Kiev regions and Kiev city. The war that uh, the, the war in the European country that Europe didn't see for since probably the World War II. Yeah. Currently, I am in Kiev. Because as a member of parliament, as a representative of authority, I have to stay in the capital city and have to to do my job. Uh, I'm currently doing a couple things. Um, first is coordinating of uh, refugees who are uh, going from east and central part of Ukraine to the west and abroad. Mm -hmm. We have 100,000 of re refugees. Uh, mostly it's mothers with their children, pretty often very young children who are trying just to run away from the war. The situation of uh, overall in terms of uh, humanitarian or, or social situation is quite difficult. Uh, in hospitals uh, and in residential buildings everywhere, people are spending their nights in the basement of buildings, uh, in the basement of hospitals. Uh, today, I uh, talked to one of the doctors Uh, who is the main doctor of the uh, maternity house where pregnant uh, women uh, go to give a birth to children. For almost a week, for five days, they have about three dozen of uh, pregnant women in the basement 24-7 because they have to hide from, from this attacks and shelling. A couple, well, about dozen of women already gave a birth in one room in the basement and this is really this is really horrible this is something that you don't want to experience in your life just believe me the thing that we are going through as a country this is really horrible putin does not hesitate to uh, fire at uh, civic uh, buildings there were already couple kindergartens hospitals and orphanages uh, ruined by russian uh, army like military rockets uh, We have about a couple, a couple hundred uh, innocent civilian people murdered by Russian occupation troops. Uh, what is worse, uh, Putin and Russian occupation uh, troops, uh, they are killing like whoever they see. They don't, uh, uh, they, they are firing uh, Ukrainian cities with a very uh, uh, dangerous weapon from air. They're using uh, grads, tornados, and other weapon of mass, of massive destroyment. Mm -hmm. And they don't distinguish between the nationalities, between the countries of origins. Uh, we already uh, identified a couple, um, uh, couple uh, situations when uh, citizens of foreign countries who used to study or visited uh, Ukraine were murdered by Russian occupation troops. Putin does not dis distinguish between age, between anything. He's like, he's just killing people. 
uh, military and civilians and and the situation is very difficult yeah. however i should say well, that let me, uh, let, me, let me say all that in spanish before halina i forget okay. everything you said and leo uh, jump in if i forget anything she said pero le, le pedí a Lina que les compartiera quién es y, 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 y qué ha vivido en estos últimos seis días. Y bueno, ella es eh, miembro del Parlamento, es diputada de la mayoría del Parlamento de Ucrania. Otra de las cosas muy importantes es que ahorita donde ella está eh, puede escuchar el tiroteo, puede escuchar las granadas, puede escuchar los misiles y eh, increíblemente ha sido sumamente duro para toda la población. Esta mañana habló con eh, el doctor en jefe de uno de los hospitales más importantes de Kiev y decía que ellos que están abunquerados en el sótano del hospital tiene tres docenas de embarazadas, muchas de las cuales tuvieron que dar a luz bajo estas circunstancias en los sótanos de, de los hospitales y que es impresionante eh, cómo eh, Putin no discrimina ni edad, ni la situación, ni la persona que es, si son civiles, si son militares o no, y que aquí es por parejo. Decía Leo al principio, y Jalina no los confirma, que hay más de casi ya 360 muertos, entre ellos 14 niños, eh, que las armas que están usando son eh, de destrucción masiva, eh, y pues básicamente ese es el resumen de lo que... Sobre nos... todo este, este eh, como asesinato indiscriminado, dice la parlamentaria ucraniana, de, a, de, disparando a gente en la calle, civiles, sin importar su nacionalidad o su origen. Eh, 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 Jalina cuenta que hay, eh, tiene ya reporte de, de una pareja de, de extranjeros que van a estudiar a Ucrania o que van a hacer investigación y que ya fueron muertos por las fuerzas de ocupación rusa. Eh, la situación la describe como horrible, terrorífica, eh, profundamente deprimente, con la gente aislada en sus casas. Y hablaba acerca de su familia. Eh, Janina, you send your family and your kids away to the west. The borders to Poland are open. The, the, the Ukrainian people... Uh, uh, running away from Kiev and not other cities are able to cross the border to other uh, countries? Uh, yes, well, my family, uh, meaning only children and my mother, uh, they are in Ukraine, in Western, in, in the most Western regions. Uh, I decided not to send them abroad because I still want, you know, to, to be in touch with my children and to have an opportunity to uh, bring them back when the war ends. And I hope it will end shortly, though it's the fifth day and uh, Russian occupation troops keep, uh, keep bombing cities and keep sending their aviation, they keep firing uh, and shelling uh, the cities. Uh, but But um, yeah, uh, for other people, the borders are open. Uh, our uh, neighboring European countries, they have opened uh, the border and uh, you don't need like any special um, uh, documents. They simplified the procedure. You only need to have your passport and at least, at least one of the parents should be with children to cross uh, the border. So like usually all this complicated, uh, complicated and bureaucratic uh, things uh, are not, you know, not on place. Uh, they simplified because everyone uh, are in Europe are understanding what is going on. Yeah, uh, to Spanish. Eh, eh, Jalina nos está diciendo que eh, en efecto su familia se fue al oeste hacia las fronteras de Polonia y otros países europeos que están abiertas para ciudadanos de Ucrania, que han simplificado el proceso burocrático de cruzar la frontera y papeles, solo necesitan el pasaporte y están permitiendo que la gente cruce. Marta. Eh, Halina, we have seen the reaction, especially um, starting Thursday, on all the sanctions imposed to Russia eh, on behalf of the United States. Germany, but it's also Japan, Australia, um, the United Kingdom, Canada, Singapore, South Korea, Switzerland. What's the internal feeling in the Ukrainian government of 
the speed of the reaction of the international community and the strength of the reaction. My question is, do you think it was too late? Too little? Too late? Uh, okay. Well, I should start from uh, saying our thanks to international community, especially to Great Britain and Poland, who took a leading role in imposing sanctions and in providing both military and financial aid to Ukraine and then the rest of the international communities, seeing the reaction and activities of Great Britain and Poland have started acting as well. Uh, of course, uh, it well, but we, it, it makes no sense to talk about the past, but of course, uh, the situation might have been uh, not as dramatic in Ukraine now, if uh, Western uh, world and uh, J7 and some other leading countries would impose sanctions on Putin when we ask them to do that, uh, like um, preventing sanctions when uh, the uh, intelligence of uh, America and some other countries were saying for two months that Putin is going to invade in Ukraine and he's getting ready all his uh, military strength and things like that. But it makes little sense to talk about the past. It's, it makes sense to discuss what is going on now. Mm -hmm. uh, regarding the current situation, I should say that the sanctions that imposed on Russia are tremendous and uh, there probably were no such, a, um, such a, examples in the past. So uh, current sanctions against uh, Russia include, uh, include uh, blocking Russia, uh, some well selected biggest banks of Russia from SWIFT. So they will be blocked from you the- think, uh, You think, Halina, you know Putin very well. Yeah. Uh, you think this will have an impact? Yes, uh, I definitely know that it will have an impact because I'm begging me and uh, our government and uh, like everyone in uh, Ukrainian politics who were doing diplomatic war uh, work were begging world to uh, block uh, Russia from SWIFT for the past five days. I will explain you why it is so important and it is vital actually. This is one of the most important things that world had to do. Yeah. Blocking from SWIFT means that Russia will be cut from the, uh, from the uh, global payment system. They will not be able to use um, any currency and do any transactions with foreign, foreign countries and with, within their countries in, uh, in currency. Uh, until Russia was blocked from SWIFT, they kept funding war against uh, Ukraine. I have uh, information that uh, while they were actually invading in Ukraine, their military factors were going on working and going on uh, producing uh, weapon, rockets, all these grads, tornadoes and, and stuff like that against Ukraine and paying for that with uh, currency. So it was vital to block, block uh, Russia from SWIFT. Second thing why it was vital is to give uh, actually uh, Russian citizens signal that what Putin is doing is unacceptable and he is harming not only uh, innocent Ukrainian people, but he is harming his own country. I should tell you that uh, Russia is currently in uh, information va vacuum. Uh, we have a lot of uh, Russian soldiers, um, how do you say it, captured by yeah. Ukrainian army, they are alive, they are treated well, but they are captured, um, they are captured. And uh, what these Russian soldiers are telling us is shocking. Well, first, uh, uh, they were sent to so-called military trainings, not the war, and they were kept uh, for military training. Second, before they were sent to Ukraine, um, uh, their captains, took away, confiscated their mobile phones. So none of Russian soldier has a mobile phone with himself. Their relatives in, Russian, uh, in Russia can't get in touch with uh, their Russian soldiers that are currently in Ukraine. Third thing, these Russian soldiers were told by uh, Russian uh, commanders that they are coming 
for for an operation in Ukraine that they like do some good thing in Ukraine. They were not told that they are sent to kill Ukrainians. And only after the invasion, they, uh, how do you call it? The orders were changed. Oh my and, God. Yes. And the thing is that uh, like uh, there are only few Russian uh, channels and uh, media that are telling the truth and contacted with Ukraine. And when uh, we as uh, Ukrainian politicians or experts are talking to Russia, to Russian audience, Russians are shocked because they say, oh, no, this is totally different from what we hear what from Russian and national TV. Yeah, and we talked about that uh, in the previous segment. So so let me um, sort of capture everything you said um, in Spanish. Eh, yo le decía a Jalina que cómo sentía ella la reacción de la comunidad internacional si siente que fue muy poquito, demasiado tarde. Me, me dice, mira, la verdad es que ya ni para qué ver al pasado. Eh, de entrada, les puedo decir que estamos sumamente agradecidos, sobre todo con la postura eh, tanto del Reino Unido como de Polonia, eh, que han abierto las puertas a todos nuestros, nuestros refugiados. En el caso de Polonia, en el caso del de Reino Unido, fueron los primeros en empujar el tema de las sanciones contra el SWIFT. Eh, hemos recibido apoyo tanto militar como económico de ambas naciones y eso se agradece profundamente. Sí, nos hubiera encantado que el hecho de que la inteligencia norteamericana sabía que Putin tenía planes de invadir Ucrania hace dos meses, nos hubiera encantado que hubieran reaccionado con estas sanciones desde ese momento. Eh, segundo, esto va a servir porque esto le aprieta el zapato al pueblo ruso porque obviamente van a subir las tasas, eh, la, la situación económica va a ser muy difícil y esto va a tener un impacto en el pueblo ruso. Eh, y por último, eh, creo que dijo algo Pero, más. No, muy importante el tema del de engaño del gobierno y del aparato ruso a sus tropas. Eh, eh, no, Jalina nos acaba de contar una cosa terrible donde dice que muchos soldados rusos fueron instruidos de, de ir a entrenamientos militares. No sabían que iban a invadir un país vecino. Claro, claro. Que, que fueron engañados por una campaña de propaganda y que una vez eh, en el teatro de operaciones, en, 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 los capitanes les confiscaron sus teléfonos celulares, de tal forma que los soldados rusos no han podido informar a sus familias en Rusia de lo que está pasando. Claro. O sea, los soldados rusos que están capturados y que están siendo cuidados por el ejército ucraniano, les están contando estos horrores, que a ellos nadie les dijo que iban a la guerra, que les dijeron que iban a una operación súper positiva, todo muy lindo, y una vez ya en tierra les dijeron, cambio de planes, vamos a matar, que les quitaron los celulares, entonces no pueden ellos contar lo que les pasó, ni pueden comunicarse ni con otros soldados, ni con su familia. Y eso es terrible. My question would be, how can we help you? Uh, well, there are a couple of things that the uh, world still can do. We are thankful for blocking SWIFT. That was a big help. Second thing which is urgent now is to uh, uh, impose to, uh, to ensure no fly zone above Ukraine. Uh, because uh, Russians are going crazy. And uh, currently, despite the fact that the Ukrainian army uh, stays, uh, stands strong and fighting uh, Russian attack uh, severely, uh, fight, fight them back, uh, our people are being very patriotic and very, you know, emotional. Uh, we have situation when uh, just uh, civilians who went to uh, territory defense points. They took small arms and with small arms, they are stopping Russian tanks. This is uh, something that you can't imagine how people are desperate, uh, protecting their land, protecting their cities and their families. I think But, one of the things that have shocked us the most is the fact that so many, and I was telling the audience at the beginning of the show, architects and accountants and designers And people who have never had an arm in their hands are willing to stay in their land to protect their freedom 
and are fighting on the streets without even knowing or being professionals, but that's the level of passion Ukrainians are showing. Uh, yes, uh, definitely. But uh, the thing is that uh, we are fighting them back on ground quite, quite good. But uh, uh, it seems that Putin is uh, uh, increasing the level of tension. And so what we see uh, today, that situation is changing and they uh, are starting uh, um, using a more serious weapon the weapon that hits cities from city, they use huge calibers. They use this, they start using more grads and tornadoes uh, and missiles. Uh, today, uh, they were for the whole day, they were uh, firing Kharkiv, which is a city in the east of uh, Ukraine where over 1 million people, 1 million civilians are living. They were just, you know, shooting and shelling on residential uh, uh, residential neighborhoods, and you can find these videos online. It's really ho it's really horrible, like uh, yeah. ruining multi-story buildings with people. And yeah. uh, we have information that they will uh, keep uh, using very dangerous uh, weapon, including weapon that is uh, uh, how do you say it? That is uh, forbidden by all the memorandums and all the you know. Uh, by the world, which is a, a weapon of massive destruction. Moreover, yesterday, Putin said that he is thinking about using nuclear weapon I know, against I know, Ukraine. I know, I know. Nuclear weapon, imagine that, how crazy this person is. He's just, you know, went absolutely mad. And if he even thinks about using nuclear weapon and he talks about that on public, then world, like not only European Union, US or Great Britain, but the whole world should react immediately. Do you imagine nuclear weapon being used today? It will be not a disaster in Ukraine. It will be a disaster in the whole world. Yes, the whole absolutely. world will suffer. Think about, think about Mexicans or their friends and relatives who are currently in Ukraine or nearby. They will all die. Not only all Ukrainian citizens, everyone will die, and it means it means that uh, that uh, that uh, that troops of the whole world, the most influential and leading countries, should act right now until it's not too late. We were begging uh, leading countries to impose sanctions when it was it still made some sense, but but they were thinking and they were wasting time. And that's what I see is happening now when we are begging for no fly zone and when we are begging for, you know, for, for uh, um, legions and for uh, troops of uh, foreign countries uh, come to Ukraine and fight back. Okay. Some countries are still thinking about, I don't know what Mexico is doing to help Ukraine and whether like whether Mexicans are doing anything, but just, you know, like, worrying but it's important to act the whole uh, the the humanity should act now until it's not too late until uh, until putin goes uh, finally crazy and use nuclear weapon of course let me let me say that all in spanish leo sí, eh, nos describe jalina una situación eh, terrorífica y desastrosa porque en eh, Ucrania están escuchando versiones de que el gobierno ruso y el propio presidente Putin amenaza con utilizar armas nucleares en territorio ucraniano. Y la parlamentaria de Ucrania que ustedes están escuchando, cuentavientes, está horrorizada de pensar que esto pudiera ser cierto y pudiera ir más allá de la amenaza. Eh, eh, desplegar, detonar armas nucleares en territorio ucraniano sería un desastre para la humanidad completa, no solamente para el suelo de Ucrania y sus fronteras con Rusia. Es una amenaza fuera de toda proporción. Pide a la comunidad internacional, a los países europeos, actuar de inmediato para detener este discurso de odio y de 
de amenaza brutal en contra de Ucrania. Describe cómo en muchos puntos de territorio ucraniano, se refirió a la ciudad de Kharkiv, al este de Ucrania, ciudadanos están peleando ferozmente para defender su territorio y su libertad en contra de, lo decíamos al principio, militares profesionales. Eh, rusos. La gran preocupación, y como lo pudieron escuchar, aunque a lo mejor no hablen inglés, eh, la, la, la intención, la preocupación, claro. la preocupación con que habla Jalina de la angustia, de que es un hecho. Putin puso a su armamento nuclear en alta alerta, en high alert, así se dice, y que toda la comunidad mundial debería de estar sumamente preocupada y tomar una postura muy seria a lo que está pasando porque hace dos meses que existía la inteligencia de saber que Putin estaba planeando lo que pasó, siente que la comunidad internacional no reaccionó a tiempo y que hoy que tenemos esta posible amenaza de que este hombre aviente una arma nuclear en Ucrania, no solamente va a impactar a los ucranianos, sino a todos los vecinos europeos y el impacto que esto tiene para los mexicanos también que tenemos familia en Europa o en Rusia o en Ucrania, es impresionante y que pide, no sabe todavía cuál es la postura de México, pero que México tenga una postura mucho más firme contra el gobierno ruso y que esto tiene que ser una voz colectiva de toda la comunidad internacional de tomar con seriedad la amenaza de Putin a usar un arma nuclear, porque claro que lo puede hacer. Durante meses amenazó con invadir Ucrania, nadie le creyó, pensaron que estaba blofeando y hoy vemos lo que vemos y ahora está amenazando con utilizar armas nucleares. Dice Jalina, debiéramos tomarlo en serio. Finally, eh, Jalina, I know you're busy and you're concerned and uh, you're tired. Eh, eh, you, it was announced that today a talks, a conversations were taking place in the border of Belarus between Ukrainian representatives and Russian representatives. Do oh, you have happened news? and yes, yes, uh, yes. Uh, these uh, negotiations uh, already happened and uh, they are finished or postponed. Uh, the results of this negotiation is nothing. Nothing. Uh, we, uh, we said that uh, Russian troops should uh, put down weapon and should leave Ukraine. So like we can continue our negotiations because like, can you imagine a negotiation when uh, Russian occupation troops continue killing oh. our people and selling our cities? and murdering innocent people uh, no uh, also uh, also putin uh, has some ultimatums that we will that it's not that our politicians will not agree on that it's our people will not agree on that because uh, we already have about i don't know probably 1000 ukrainians killed in ukraine over five days mm -hmm. yeah both military and civilians. So they will not be, uh, they will not agree with ultimatums that Putin us uh, are saying. And this yeah. ultimatum includes uh, that uh, Ukraine will not be able to, uh, to have its own foreign politics, that we should like uh, act in our foreign politics, the same as Russia. Imagine. And this is something which is not acceptable because Russia is dictatorship. Yes. Russia is tyranny, and Russia is not about uh, European family, which Ukraine has chose uh, eight years ago. And in our constitution, it says that the only uh, foreign vector of Ukraine is uh, Euro-Atlantic integration. It's in our constitution. This is something that you can't change like that. Of course. Uh, and so uh, some that. other ultimatum uh -huh. that people will not uh, ex um, expect is accept so uh the uh these negotiations uh, were put on pause and uh, they will continue tomorrow the uh, representatives of russia and ukraine were uh, sent back to the capital cities and they will need they were they agreed to meet tomorrow or or in a short time to continue negotiations but one thing that i should tell you and this is important this is also about uh, how Putin behaves. 
and what a kind of a person he is. Putin did not participate in this negotiation. Uh, according to our information, currently Putin is in uh, Ural. This is the very one of the very eastern part of Russia. Uh, I don't know, 100,000 kilometers away from Moscow, from their capital city. He is hiding. Putin is hiding from the situation, from his people, from his capital city, from the decision. He is in the special dot, protected dot in Ural. Okay. And he lets from that dot, he sends, you know, he sends all the, uh, all the orders to continue war, to continue killing people, and he's hiding himself. Okay. And irresponsible. In, in, in Spanish. Let me say all that in Spanish. Eh, le decía eh, Leonardo que eh, hace algunas horas se llevó a cabo, a cabo una conversación entre representantes ucranianos y rusos eh, y que nos contara un poco Jalina de qué pasó y dijo, no se llegó a nada, no se llegó a nada y para resumir todo lo que dijo, eh, es imposible que lleguemos a un acuerdo porque el pueblo ucraniano no va a, a aceptar las, los ultimátums que puso Rusia. Eh, uno, que la política internacional de Ucrania sea regida por la misma política internacional de Rusia, que tomando el contexto de lo que les explicamos la vez pasada, Leo y yo, sobre por qué pasó esto, la gran preocupación de Rusia de que Ucrania se vuelva parte de la OTAN. Eh, entonces, ese es el, el ultimato número uno. Y eh, el simple hecho de que quieren que el gobierno de Ucrania esté regido por Rusia. Y dice, lo más increíble de todo es que él no estuvo en estas pláticas. Manda a sus emisarios. Y él está en el, en el sur, sur, sur de Rusia. En el este. Hacia, ¿eh? ¿En el este? En el este. Esta es una cordillera que se llama Los Urales, Los Montes los Urales. Urales. Sí. Por eso Jalina Montes dice Urales. Ural. Que, eh, imaginen ustedes un, un búnker eh, eh, dentro de una montaña y ahí está escondido Putin y desde ahí está eh, operando y manejando la situación. Entonces, es, dice, está escondido, eh, está súper protegido, no está en Moscú, está a 100 mil kilómetros de Moscú, porque saben que Rusia es enorme, y ahí está evadiendo la situación y desde ahí mandando instrucciones eh, y diciendo, pues maten esto, maten el otro. Y como decía hace un momento, lo preocupante es que cada vez esta guerra escala más ahora está usando armas mucho más potentes, eh, están eh, ahora sí que subiéndole dos rayas a la intensidad y eso es una gran preocupación por la cual eh, ella también pide que se cierre el espacio aéreo de Ucrania porque lo han hecho muy bien en tierra, pero pues no tienen el armamento de aire que tienen los rusos y el, por el aire es muy difícil que ellos se puedan proteger. Halina, we could talk to you for hours. Thank you so much for sharing what is truly happening in Ukraine with all our audience. I, I think that the, the Mexican hearts are totally with you. You have no idea the amount of Twitters that we just received with the utmost sympathy for everything you're living. We send you the biggest kiss, the biggest hug, and please let's keep in touch. Okay, can I can I like finish with, uh, with the things that Mexican people can do? Of course. Uh, well, uh, you can do actually three things. Uh, first thing is important. Uh, everyone can do that. Sharing the information, the true information that is happening in Ukraine and actually make your politicians act uh, accordingly, help provide uh, help and assistance to Ukraine and also force uh, NATO to act Uh, second thing, uh, we have opened uh, our National Bank of Ukraine, have opened uh, special accounts where any person, any citizen whose heart is breaking now can send some money to support Ukrainian people, Ukrainian army in our uh, this in the war against Russia. And third thing, uh, today our president, the president of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky, announced that we welcome all the uh, veterans, all the soldiers from all over the world who can come to Ukraine and help us fight back. So we are forming an international legion to actually uh, to stand for uh, to stand uh, through Russia. So I don't know. I, I, I see. I know that Mexico is too far, but if uh, 
anyone else in the world is seeing you and uh, their hearts are breaking too and they want to act and not just you know to see and uh, send likes and send smiles to what is going on they can act thank, thank you, you so much, Increíble, dice, antes de despedirme, les voy a decir que sí pueden hacer ustedes en México, aunque estén muy lejos. Compartir la información en redes sociales de lo que está pasando, presionar a los políticos de su país a reaccionar y a tomar una postura mucho más enérgica, igualmente con la OTAN, a apoyar. Eh, pueden apoyar a través de diferentes páginas y fundaciones con fondeo y algo que me dieron hasta ganas de llorar. Ellos están convocando un, eh, pues legión digamos, una legión y un ejército internacional y que invitan a todos los veteranos, a todos los ex militares, a todos los soldados que se quieran unir a ir a Ucrania a ayudarles a luchar esta batalla por la libertad de su país. Halina, thank you so much. I send you the biggest hug. And um, your message was loud and clear. Um, this show is very powerful and is heard not only in Mexico, but Latin America, the United States, and other countries. And I am sure you have touched the hearts of many listeners and there will be a change. Thank you. Thank you, Halina. Thank you very much. Bueno, Leo, yo creo que, híjole, me sentí sumamente conmovida con lo que Imagínense lo desesperados que están. Eh, les decía Leo hace eh, unos días que Ucrania tiene un ejército minúsculo. Se desarmaron en los noventas, no tienen forma de defenderse. Y ahorita que digan que, oigan, bienvenidos todos los soldados que quieran luchar con nosotros, no importa de qué parte del mundo sean, me quiero aventar por la ventana. Esta es una mujer extraordinariamente joven, eh, 32 años, uh -huh. eh, 32 años eh, que es parlamentaria en su país, es vicecoordinadora de la mayoría, imagínense el, el, el cargo, el puesto y el nivel de responsabilidad, con dos pequeños hijos que envió al oeste hacia Europa para eh, eh, protegerlos de la situación en Kiev, de los bombardeos y de los ataques, nos dijo que ha preferido que no abandonen territorio ucraniano, van con su madre, porque quiere seguir en contacto con ellos, son sus hijos, y ella, como todos sus colegas en el Parlamento, decidió quedarse en Kiev para respaldar al gobierno y para ser fuerte ante esta situación. Las pláticas estas que, insisto, por esto hay, hay que tener mucho cuidado con esto, porque Rusia y Putin son unos profesionales de la propaganda, y envían el mensaje al mundo de que ya iniciaron pláticas y un diálogo de negociación. Cuando nos dice eh, la parlamentaria, no sirvió de nada, no llegaron a nada, no hay ninguna conclusión. Las condiciones de, de Ucrania son muy sencillas, es cese al fuego inmediato y retiro de las tropas rusas de Ucrania. No, lo más impresionante es que los soldados rusos se los llevaron engañados. Sí, sí, esto, eso está impresionante, impresionante, porque mire, ha habido invasiones en el mundo eh, y operaciones multinacionales como las de Afganistán o las de eh, Irak, eh, eh, organismos multinacionales, tropas azules de, 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 de la ONU, en fin, pero todo el mundo sabe a dónde va y a qué va. Hay una estrategia, hay un reporte, hay una información, hay una capacitación. Aquí los mandaron a entrenamientos, Marta. Es, es un crimen. El, el gobierno ruso y el señor Putin están cometiendo muchos crímenes de lesa humanidad. Y bueno, eh, ojalá que muy pronto, más pronto que tarde, nuestro gobierno tenga una postura mucho más enérgica con lo que está pasando con Rusia y Ucrania. 